Nelson Mandela Bay and Port Elizabeth's Kings Beach is where the South African Inflatable Boat Racing National Series for 2019 got underway and Showcase was on the beach to find out all about it. Port Elizabeth um, is the, currently the first national of the 2018-2019 uh, season. Um, the sport, basically inflatable racing, had its inception approximately or more than 30 years ago. Um, with the Transigalas uh, Ocean Challenge most probably being one of the uh, most well-known races around the world. Um, that just had recently had its, its 32nd anniversary. Port, Port Elizabeth then is chosen as the start to the national series. We've got a two-day event. Firstly, uh, today the surf circuit um, in three classes, the standard class, the pro stock class, and then also in the modified class. And then tomorrow we will finish off the weekend uh, with a flat water circuit at North End Lake. As Herman said, there are three different classes racing in the national series, stock, pro stock and modified. Each has its own unique criteria for qualification. So what are the main differences between the three classes? The stock class is a stock standard engine. Um, it has various limitations um, on the um, actual technical aspects of the motor. Once a motor is homologated, which is basically a registration uh, to the UIM, which is the governing body uh, worldwide for, for um, uh, power boats, um, there's, uh, you, they, you can only do so many things um, to a stock standard engine. They're also limited by means of the uh, rev limiters, so they can only push out approximately 6,850 RPM, whereas the pro stock, which is the next class in line, um, is uh, unli well, basically unlimited in certain aspects. They do not have a rev counter, they've got a larger exhaust, and they may um, alter the uh, carburetor settings on the engines itself. The modified class is an open class, um, mainly using a 50 horsepower um, outboard motor block, and then they can basically do whatever they will uh, want to do um, with regard to certain technical aspects um, in the engine itself. As a relative niche sport, inflatable boat racing has had its ups and downs, with both participation numbers and the governance of the sport coming sharply into focus. But as Herman explains, things are on a much more even keel right now. Um, yeah, we've gone through quite a, quite a difficult period within the sport, um, especially when it uh, was still the South African Inflatable Boat Association, where after we uh, went through quite a transgression period um, with new management, um, it seems like that the younger guys are getting involved in the sport more and more, specifically um, here in the Eastern Cape and then also in the Western Cape and then also new teams participating in the Transagalas. So the sport's looking good. Um, we are unfortunately, um, what can I say, battling with uh, sponsorships, which makes any event possible and you just make it even better. But um, I think if you look at the beach and the amount of boats here on the surf circuit, first in the season, the sport's definitely great. An inflatable boat travels at high speed through rough and turbulent waters with two people on board. This carries with it plenty of risk. And while accidents cannot be totally eliminated, the risks are mitigated by the sport's strict set of rules and regulations pertaining to safety. It is a very different, uh, very dangerous sport. We've had some uh, serious accident, uh, accidents in the past, years and years ago. Um, but from the UIM perspective and from the South African Power Boat Association's perspective, um, we make 100% sure that we follow the rules. Our safety, our medical um, are always in place. We make sure that we've got the best uh, marshals and qualified marshals and medical, medical services on the water. Uh, so to reduce that risk, unfortunately, like, we, like we've mentioned, it is a power, power sport. Um, propellers and those kind of things are involved. But also the equipment that the guys are wearing, um, uh, safety equipment ensures that they are well looked after um, when it comes to safety aspects. There is no question that inflatable boat or rubber duck racing is thrilling and attracts adrenaline junkies in droves. So what would be the best way to go about getting involved in the sport and what are the initial costs? If you're looking at starting, I mean you can get some good second hand rigs for uh, approximately 30 to, to 40,000 rand, um, which will enable you to race you know, in, one of, in, in, in one of the classes. But probably the cheapest option is to start within the pros or the stock class, which do not require that much technical alterations to the engine itself. Your expensive hobby is, is, is part of the sport is your propellers. Um, you're looking at about approximately five to 10,000 Rand for a, a decent propeller that will, that will make you competitive. So um, some of the guys, you know, they get away with 40,000 Rand. Some of the guys, the longer you're in the sport, unfortunately, you know, the more expensive it becomes and the better you become and the, be the better equipment you require. Um, but you're looking at a, a new rig will set you back about 70,000 Rand. Uh, second hand, you can pick them up for 30 to 40 and you will be competitive for a season. 
Growing the sport amongst the next generation is an important focus for the sport's governing body. And Herman tells us that plenty of time, effort and resources are being invested to ensure that youngsters from all backgrounds have the chance to at some stage race a rubber duck. Um, yes, we, we've got development programs in the Eastern Cape and in the Western Cape. Currently that we're trying to involve um, youngsters uh, in, in the sport, um, specifically from previously disadvantaged groups as well. Um, in Cape Town we've got a couple of youngsters that are coming from school level um, that are now entering and becoming co-pilots and we would like to see that um, as part of our lotto funding through, through Power Boats South Africa that, we will, that they will enable us to actually have two or three boats on the circuits either in the Western Cape or the Eastern Cape to give youngsters opportunity to actually race um, those boats themselves and then to develop into uh, pilots for the future for the sport. South Africa has had international success over the last few years. Reynaud Beck is a current world champion, as is Chad Romans, who collected a third world title in France in October last year, when he and co-pilot Candace Hutting raced to victory in the modified class in what were really rough conditions. Yeah, it was a great feeling. Um, we went over with a, with a mission, and the mission was accomplished. Great feeling to, to go and um, come home the 2018 modified world champions. The competition was really tough. There were guys from um, France specifically that were extremely quick, and we had local Barry Mox, which is always very quick, um, and a few other guys, uh, Hagen from Germany. So the competition was really, really tough, and um, we had a good, good championship. Chad won the standard class world championships in 2013 and again in 2015. As a top racer and a veteran of the sport, he's in a very good position to give us a rundown on what challenges the sport is facing right now. Yeah, the challenges of pilot are extremely difficult. Um, sponsorship in the sport is, is quite difficult. We're fortunate to have a, a sponsor from Powerade um, and they look after us. Unfortunately, it doesn't cover all our expenses, um, but it does help to have a part sponsor. So um, I don't think it's almost impossible without a sponsor to do something like this. Chad's co-pilot, Candace Hutting, began racing around 15 years ago. With her husband, Mike, they were runners-up in the World Championships in Port Elizabeth in 2009. Mike is now the team mechanic, while Candace does the hard yards in the front of Chad's boat. Yeah, racing with Candy is always fun. Um, I don't believe either that there's any other lady co-pilot that will and is able to do what she can do in the boat. Um, she is definitely one of a kind. Um, and you'll only understand that if you've been in the boat with her. Um, the conditions that we had in France for that long haul, they were absolutely like, treacherous and Candy was over that nose cone for three and a half hours keeping the boat upright. So, yeah, it's quite incredible. Candace, who hails from East London, is clearly a very strong and dependable co-pilot with plenty of experience. So how and when did she get involved in the sport of inflatable boat racing? Um, yeah, I started racing in uh, 2005. Um, I raced Transagallus with Kevin Vine, um, which was a really tough race. And from there, I started racing with my husband, Michael Hutting. And yeah, I just carried on. And unfortunately, my husband hurt his back. So we, I ended up riding with Chad Romans. Um, I think my hubby only allows me to ride with Chad because he knows he's a good pilot. In the modified class, one of the private boats is piloted by Tertius Swanepoel from Melkmoorstrand in the Western Cape. His co-pilot is a man who grew up in landlocked Zimbabwe. But against many odds, Kevin Kamutiba has found his way to the national series as Tertius' co-pilot. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm feeling so great uh, to be in a certain level that I can meet a lot of people and I have exposure. To, to watch and learn how other people are doing it. I, I used to go to the beach and see people having boats, riding boats, but uh, later on, I've been, I've been admiring it, and later on, I just, I just uh, have that passion that I can do it. And later on, uh, my boss, uh, Mr. Tishas, uh one day just said, can you have a try? Can you... Can, can you swim? Then he, I said yes. Then he said, okay, one day I will take you to the beach. Then Mr. Tatias and uh, Ukis uh, took me to the beach, that is Melkbos, uh, in, a, in a Melkbos beach. Then we went to the beach, then they tried me as a co-pilot. Then I, I feel like for the first time I have that fear 
to see big waves, uh, to see, to be in deep inside in the water. But later on, it started getting into me. And finally, I, I, I achieved something. And I know how to do moves in a boat, to, to stabilize a boat when doing surfing, when doing long haul. The weekend's racing took place in perfect weather conditions in Nelson Mandela Bay. There were an encouraging number of new boats and pilots involved, and the racing both in the surf and long haul races was top class and bodes well for a highly successful 2019 season.